I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Urbis, and welcome to the final session of our eight-week series, Accelerate Open Roads. Today, we're going to be dealing with producing digital deliverables. So some of the things that I'm going to cover today are we're going to first define what exactly is a digital deliverable, talk about some common types of design files, that may be used for digital deliverables. We'll get into how we can create just some basic PDF sheet creation using the uh, print organizer and the sheet index. Talk about how we can create some specialized sheets such as plan roll sheets, plan and profile roll sheets, and cross-section roll sheets. Sometimes you have to create those on your projects as a deliverable type. Then we'll start taking a look at the actual project design files and produce some proposed terrain models so we'll create a terrain of our project in a DGN format, and then we'll also create an XML format of that terrain so that could be given to uh, uh, the contractor or someone else that's using a different piece of software. And we'll go into also cover 3D break lines and how to create just a 3D break line file that may be required for someone talk about how to export to the IFC file format, and then finally we'll finish off with just some cross-section reports. So first, what exactly is a digital deliverable? Digital deliverable could be many things, could be many types of electronic formats, but in our world, in the world of transportation of civil engineering, it's basically any digital data that can be used for design, construction, and asset management. Okay, so some of the common types of digital deliverables that we use in in our world are, you know, our project plan sheets, which generally are our DGN files if you're using Bentley products, and then a lot of times those are printed out to PDF format, which is Adobe file format. Okay, so those are the two main ones I think that are used pretty much universally in our industry. But then we also have the 2D and 3D model files. Okay, now these are the individual open roads designer model files. And these would be your terrains, your geometry, your corridors, your drainage files, your bridge, all, that, all those DGN files. Now, you may also have what we call a civil integrated model design file. That's probably just going to be a collection of all of the above individual design files referenced into a single container, and that acts as your project file for your entire project. Okay, so that's another type of digital deliverable in some ways. Now, these formats, we can export this stuff out to other formats to be used in other pieces of software and for other applications. You can export out to XML, iModel, IFC, DWG, DXF, and so on. There's all these different things that we need to worry about once we get to the end of the project because the contractor may need some of this information, an estimator need, may need some of this information, your agency may need some of this information, and a lot of times it's different files, different types of digital deliverables. Um, there's even reports that come into play, you know, some Word documents, Excel files, and then maybe some additional PDF reports, and maybe even just a basic old plain TXT file. Okay. So these are just some of the things that we commonly have on our projects, which I'm sure everyone is already familiar with some of these formats. So let's take a closer look at our project. I want to spend some time today going through how we can export some of this data and also take a closer look at some of the, the other things that we had on our project as we worked through this in this last eight-week session. So I'm going to jump over into the software here. And I'm going to kind of pick up where Joey left off last week. Now, last week we covered the drawing production. And Joey went through the process of creating plan and profile sheets. He also went through the process of creating the cross-section sheets and annotating the, uh, the information. Okay. Now, right now, 
if you're going to follow along with me at home or in your office, I'm working in the Session 8 data folder, and I'm in the Sheets folder, and I have the Highway 72 cross-sections open up. Now, these are the sections that Joey was working on last week that he generated Sheets for. And one thing I want to point out here that um, we didn't really get into last week was how the sheets are organized in this sheet index over here. If you recall, as he was creating these sheets, there is an option to add the sheets to this sheet index over here in the Explorer. And what that does for us is it organizes all our files and it, and it numbers them accordingly. So you can see here that in my sheet index, this particular one's called Training Imperial, and this is linked to our work set that we're using. So we're using the Training Imperial um, work set. So this sheet index is linked to that, and so it knows how many sheets that I added to this sheet index. Now this sheet index here, this lives on your C drive, and if we go and browse into the, uh, the program data folder here for the software, you can see that if we dig down deep into the back scenes of the software here, if we go to Program Data, Bentley, Open Roads Designer, CE, Configuration, Workspaces, Training Examples, Workset, that we have this DGNWS file there. And that's the actual sheet index. So this is where the sheets get written to. And that's how it keeps track and organizes the number of sheets that you have for your project. Okay? So... Remember that the sheet index, it's not stored in the active design file at all. It's stored in this DGNWS file here. Okay, so it's important to remember that. So I just want to point that out here. Okay, now I delivered a, a DGNWS file that I have here that I use to populate these sheets, and it should have all the sheet numbers, and it should load up similar to what we have here. Um, so if you just drop that into the, uh, the work set there and you're using our training file, that hopefully that should work for you. Um, so this is the DGN sheet index that I'm working, or DGN WS sheet index that I'm using for this for this session. Now, one other thing that's this is nice about the the sheet index here is it organizes our files and also puts these sheet numbers in here that you can see. Um, also, you can add text favorites and fields to your border so that it populates the sheet numbers down here. Okay, so. I set this one up so it would do my, my page totals here, or my sheet numbers and my sheet totals for my project. So it's, it knows that we have 20 sheets, and you can see each sheet has its special number, and it can number each one of those accordingly. So that's all working based off of my sheet index over here in the, the Explorer. Now, one of the digital deliverables I talked about was just basic PDF file creation. So the way the sheet index can help us with just basic PDF file creation is, one, it's going to organize all our sheets. And it's going to number them, put them in order accordingly. It also has the print organizer built into it. So you'll notice the icon up here is the print organizer. We can go directly to that, grab our PDF print driver there, click OK. That's going to load it into the, uh, the print organizer here. It's going to create our PSET file for us. And it's going to load all our sheets in there. So now at this point, what we could do is just go over to select them all and just go to print and save it out to a PDF file. Okay. Now for time purposes, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to open up my PDF file here that I've already gone ahead and created. So if you're following along with me and you have the data on your computer, if you just go to session eight data and you go under sheets, you will see that there's a training Imperial PDF file there. And if you open that up, You'll see I got my plan sheets in there. They all look like they're supposed to. I have my cross-section sheets in there, one single PDF, and they're all numbered down here based off of my uh, sheet index that I have set up in the software. Okay, So this would be considered you know, a simple digital deliverable of just the plans. right? Again, we can create that via the, uh, the sheet index tool there with the, with the print organizer here. Okay. So that's, Print Organizer has been around for quite some time, so I'm sure most people are already familiar with that tool. So the next thing I want to talk about in regards to uh, digital deliverables, and maybe some people will argue if this is truly a digital deliverable or not, but it's just creating like role type of plots. I think a lot of the demos you, you typically see from us, um, and even in the, some of the training material, we, we just typically are doing individual sheets 
right? But sometimes you may be required to do like a role plot for a you know, public meeting or if you're going to sit down with, with your design team or the contractor to work on some design issues or whatnot. A lot of times you may need a role type of plot um, for cross sections or per, for plan and profiles or whatever. So the first um, example I want to do here of creating a role plot is I'm going to go and create some stacked cross sections or some role sections. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my session eight data here. I'm going to go into sheets. I have a file here called highway 72 cross section stacked. I'm going to open that up and we're going to create some stacked cross sections or rolled roll cross sections. Okay, so here's my file. I already have my necessary reference files attached. So if you were with us last week and you went through the process of creating the cross section sheets, you'll understand that this is basically just a blank file with all my necessary references attached in my 2D and my 3D view. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create some cross-section named boundaries, and we're going to create just a roll set of uh, cross-sections. So instead of putting the cross-sections in a bunch of different sheet models, we're going to throw them into one sheet model, and you can use that for like a roll plot of your cross-sections. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the, the process that we've been using for creating sections. So make sure you're in the open roads modeling workflow. Under drawing production, I'm going to go over to the name boundary tool. Select place name boundary. It's going to load up our place name boundary civil tool here. And we're going to come over to civil cross section. Okay, now at this point, the drawing seat is going to play a critical role in how the uh, sections get created in this fashion. Okay, I have a special DGN library sheet library set up or sheet seed set up to do these stack sections. Okay, now I've delivered that with the data set. You're going to have to drop that into your um, your sheet seed folder here in the um, in your workspace. Okay, if you want this to work, so you'd have to go to organization civil. Civil Default Standards, DGN Library, and then down here in the Sheet Seeds, you want to drop it into here. Okay, so you'll see there's a stacked, there should be a stacked one in here. Okay, so, and I've included a README file in the zip file that tells you where to put all this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to choose the drawing seat as stacked because that's going to set my settings for me, do my stack sections. I'm just going to go through, I'm going to follow the prompts. So I'm going to identify my path element. That's going to be our center line alignment where I want to create these cross sections along. We're going to start at 505 plus 10. And we're going to go down to 543 plus 00. Okay, so I'm going to set that up. Left and right offset will be minus 125 and 125. Interval will be 100. Vertical exaggeration will be 1, top clearance will be 15, bottom clearance 5, elevation datum 1. Okay, toggle on, create drawing, show dialog. So now I'm just going to left click a couple times here. It's going to place the name boundaries in my file. Okay, so you'll see the named boundary show up in my 3D model over here. So that determines the cross-section station location and the interval between each cross-section name boundary. And these are going to um, slice through the 3D model information and create our cross-sections for us. Okay. So again, I'm using the, the excess stacked drawing seed. That's what's going to uh, give us more of a roll or stacked cross-section plot here. Okay. So once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to go ahead and do a little bit of processing. It's going to read all those name boundaries in the model. It's going to slice through the model, create some other uh, drawing models for us at those particular stations where those named boundaries exist. And then we're going to end up with one sheet model with all the cross sections in it in more of a, uh, a roll plot or a stacked fashion. So it's very useful again for just, you know, when you're working in the early stages of your project, just trying to get an idea for what the uh, project looks like from a cross-sectional standpoint. Also good to figure out if you're, the project's more of a cut or fill type of project as well. 
So it's going through. It's not only uh, creating the sections, it's also annotating them as well. It's throwing the grid on there. It's doing all that. So that's why it takes a little bit of time sometimes to uh, process this. You don't have to have it annotate. Um, this particular case had all the annotation turned on, so it will take a little bit more time to uh, process these sections. So once it's done, it's going to open the, uh, the sheet model here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close my name boundary dialog. It's done processing. Okay, and then we can go ahead and zoom into our, our sections over here. And you can see it put them all in one sheet model. Okay, and they're all annotated accordingly. Okay, and if we take a look down here at the bottom, you can see we have all the different drawing models there. But we just have one sheet model with all the different cross sections in it. So now if you, you want to make a roll plot of this, you can just simply place a fence around it or whatever, go to your plotting tools and print it to, to your plotter or to a PDF and whatnot. Okay. So that's how you do the roll plot. It's all based on having the uh, special um, stacked cross section sheet seed. Now I'm using Open Roads Designer 2019 Release 2. Um, so I had to make that custom, but in the next version of the software that's coming out, um, we will deliver that with the software so that you can do this by default without having to have this uh, file that I'm giving you for this version. Okay. So now let's talk about how we create the plan and profile role plots. It's kind of the same thing. We just change some settings and use a slightly different um, sheet C definition file. So I'm going to change gears here. I'm going to open up my plan and profile roll sheets DGN file here, and that's located in the Session 8 Data Sheets folder, Highway 72, Plan and Profile Roll Sheets. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. And again, this is just basically a blank file with the necessary references attached that I would need for my plan creation. Let me change my views here. Actually, I need to open up my profile view. Okay, so here's my horizontal geometry and my 2D view here. Here's my profile model in view number two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the uh, a roll plan sheet for this view here. So we're going to create a role plan sheet, then we'll create a separate profile um, role sheet. So I'm going to go up to uh, Open Roads Modeling again, go over to Drawing Production. Go over to our Name Boundaries tool here. And I'm going to create this at 100 scale, so I'm going to change my annotation scale here to 100. Go to my Place Name Boundary tool, select that, brings up our name boundary tool again. This time we're going to be doing a plan, so we're going to select the civil plan icon. And for our drawing seed, we're just going to select the ANSI D plan. We're not going to do a plan and a profile, we're just going to do one plan on a, on a big sheet. Okay, I'm going to change my detail scale to 100. And then I'm going to come over here and identify my path element. I'm going to key in some values here for the length of my name boundary that I'm going to create along my alignment, as well as my offsets. I'm going to use 300 to the left, 300 to the right. Okay, that's the width of our named boundary. Here's the length of our name boundary. And then the limits of this name boundary element that we're going to create for our plan. I'm just going to use the start and end station. And once I have that information entered in there, I'm just going to left click through the prompts. Notice it places the shape in there temporarily until I accept it. I'm going to left click to accept it. It's going to bring up the create drawing dialog. Once again, I want to make sure I'm using the, I'm using the proper scale, so I'm going to set this to 100. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. That's going to go ahead and create just a plan for us. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that the border is 
obviously not the right size, and that's because I'm using just the standard uh, 34 by 22 inch sheet border. Okay, well obviously this is bigger than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this border here that gets drawn in here. And I'm just gonna expand the size of my of my sheet boundary here in my sheet model, okay? So it's gonna go up to the sheet boundary here under drawing production, I'm gonna select that. You can see right now she's using ANSI D sheet size 22 by 34. And again, it was coming from the sheet seed that I selected, which was the ANSI D plan. I'm just going to change this to custom. It's going to allow us to adjust the width of this sheet. Change it to something like 55. It's going to extend out the sheet border there. And now we're able to plot this as a roll. Now, we could also reference in a border if we want to put a, a nice border on it or insert a cell as a border as well. So we, we do have that option if you need that. So that's very simply how you can create a roll type of sheet. Now from here, again, to create the PDF, you can just go over to the backstage view and just say print and send it out to a PDF file, okay? So let's go back to the multi-model view here. Let's go ahead and create a uh, roll plot for the profile, okay? So we got our profile model over here, okay? So it's gonna be a similar process. So I'm gonna go back to drawing production, go to Place name boundary once again. This time we need to toggle this to civil profile. Select the drawing seed that's just called ANSI D profile. Let's select our drawing scale and set that to 100 as well. Our method we're going to use here is station limits. And then we're going to key in some settings here. So my length. I'm going to set this up to be 5,000 again. And then for my height, I'm going to set this for 160. I don't want it to be too high. And the other values here, I'm just going to leave and accept the defaults. Now, notice in the lower left corner, it's asking me to identify the profile view. So I'm just going to come over here and left click in my profile view. I'm going to change my stationing here. I want to go from 500, to 500 plus 00 to 549 plus 00. Okay, so make sure your settings look something like that. Okay, and it's going to draw that name boundary into the profile model. So this is going to be your window or your drawing clip window for the, uh, for the profile. Okay, so I'm going to left click in there to accept that. It's going to bring us to the create drawing dialog again. You can see the drawing seed that I'm using here, ANSI D profile. It's loading up the defaults from that drawing seed, so I'm going to change that to 100 for my drawing scale there. And then down here, we're just going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to go and generate a whole nother drawing for us of just the, uh, the profile there, and it's also going to uh, perform the annotation on that. So once again, it just brings in the standard sheet size that was defined with that uh, sheet seed that we used, that drawing seed. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to adjust my sheet border here, or the sheet boundary. Change that to uh, 55. Let's go ahead and expand that out. Okay, so now we got a nice sheet roll there for our for our profile. Okay, so we order to a PDF as well. Okay, so I just wanted to cover that real quick because it's pretty common stuff that you experience on a on a real project. Um, it de definitely um, deals with uh, digital deliverables as far as a, a role plot goes if you need to deliver that type of information. Okay, so the next thing I want to get into is just the, uh, the project DGN files and just the project integrated model or the civil integrated model. I think you've seen that we've been working with reference files throughout uh, the sessions. Uh, we have many reference files we've been dealing with, geometry, corridors, we have... Um, bridges, all kinds of models that we're, that we're working with. Um, and generally, it's a good practice to, you know, bring all these things together into an integrated model or just a design model so that everyone can see them, different disciplines and whatnot. So what I have here um, is a design model folder, session number eight data design model. If we go in there, I'm going to open up Highway 72 design model. Again, what this is, is just the uh, collection of all of our design models brought into one file. 
This can be used for review purposes or whatever other information you need to gather um, from from your project along the way. So essentially, it's always a good practice to bring this data together so that you could see the big picture of the project, right? So this is just a blank file. We go over to Home tab here. We take a look at our references. I just have all my necessary references attached in here for my project. So I got my horizontal and vertical geometry. I have my crossovers that I modeled, my intersection I model. I got my striping and my horizontal layout files, my proposed drainage. I got my, my finished corridor models, my bridges, all this stuff. So generally, it's good practice to uh, keep one of these models in place at all time. Um, because you may need to export this at some point as well to say like an iModel or some other format. Um, so this also may be required for a digital deliverable. You know, your DOT may not just want the 2D DGN files. They may want this integrated, you know, 3D thing that's all one, um, has all the files referenced into it. So it's always good practice to have that. It's good for uh, reviewing and checking for issues along the way. So I just want to show that real quick. So one of the other big common deliverables as far as um, the data goes is a proposed terrain model. You know, we talk about existing terrain models, which is generally your survey data. Um, so I want to get into now how we create a proposed terrain model from all this stuff that we've been creating over the last several weeks. You know, we've, we've created this mainline corridor. You know, Joey went through and created the intersection. He designed the intersection. He designed the crossover. Um, you know, I spent a session doing all this grading around the bridge abutments and whatnot. But at some point, um, somebody needs a terrain model. You know, generally the uh, the drainage engineer is going to want a, a, a proposed terrain model for um, surface purposes. And he may want to see proposed contours and all that. So we need a terrain model to do that from all this data. Contractor may always may also uh, require a terrain model uh, for machine control purposes or to bring it to his software. So that's where I want to go with this next. I want to take a look at how we generate a terrain model from this uh, from this data that we've been dealing with the last several weeks. So I'm going to go over to browse to uh, my terrain folder. So I'm going to go to terrain here. And I have some files set up here, and I think I'm going to start off in the most basic form of creating the terrain. So I'm going to open up this file here called Highway 72 TM Mainline Back. Okay, and I'll take a look at this and explain why I did some of the things that I did. There's multiple ways to handle this. Now, our project is has a bridge, okay? So it's basically there's a gap between the two areas of the project, okay? So we have basically a back portion, you know, leading up to the bridge, and then we have an ahead portion that's in front of the bridge. Now, when we go to create a terrain, you can't create a terrain of all that information at once because we have this bridge grading that's underneath the bridge, and we'd end up with all kinds of messy triangles and things like that because we can't have vertical faces. Um, so what I went ahead and did here is I, I took our corridor that we had created initially, and I just saved it off into two different pieces, and I referenced it into this 3D file here. Okay, so what you see here is a 3D file, okay, and I referenced in just the first portion of our corridor, which I called Highway 72 Corridor Mainline Back. I also referenced in the crossover and the intersection um, files as well. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we want to interrogate this corridor information and build a proposed terrain model from it. So there's a few different ways we can do this, but I'm going to choose the uh, the most simplest way to do it first. So I'm going to go over to the Terrain tab here. I'm going to use something called the Graphical Filter. Now notice right now I have all the levels turned on in my corridors that are attached. Okay, The components are on, the features are on, everything's turned on. right? So what I want to do is I just want to create a terrain model of basically just the top features, okay, the top linear features. I don't care about the stuff underneath. Um, maybe for this particular project, all they want is the top finish grade, okay? So I'm going to utilize this graphical filter to go in and read the top finished features from my corridors and my intersection and whatever 3D information that I have defined um, attached to this file, okay? Now, when you create train models, you typically want to be in a 3D file, so that's why I'm in 3D right now. So just 
straight up 3D file. If I call my design models here, see so it's just 3D. Okay, I'm not dealing with anything 2D here. Okay, so go to train from graphical filter, and then we have these filters that are set up and already delivered with the software. Okay, so we have one set up here that's called proposed finished grade, and there's a whole host of them here that you can use and um, they're very useful. Okay. Uh, so these are most of these are set up based on feature definitions and the feature definitions that are displayed from the corridor and from the templates. Okay. So I'm going to choose the one that's called proposed finished grade. Okay. And if we were to take a look at this filter, I'm going to select the terrain filter manager here. We come over here. Okay. I select proposed finished grade and you can see it has some additional filters that make up that particular group. So this proposed finished grade is actually a filter group of individual little filters that exist down here. Okay. So these filters are all looking for specific feature definitions to be included in this terrain model that I'm going to create. Okay. So I'm going to create a top finished surface from all of my corridors and intersections and whatever else I have referenced into this file. Okay, so if I go to the edit filter tool here, you're going to see that my civil features that are going to be used are shown over here on the right. So these are all the different features that it's going to be looking for in my file. Okay, so I just want to show how that's set up. So I'm going to close that. Okay, so I've selected my graphical filter called Propose Finish Grade. Now, before we even run this, we could do a preview to make sure that it's selecting the right things or it's going to select the right things. So I'm going to select preview, and you'll see that it highlights the longitudinal features in the model. Okay, so you can see it like, looks like it's grabbing what it needs to grab to build a terrain. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now, at this point, what we want to do the options here on how we want the uh, terrain to be displayed once it gets created, as well as the name. So I'm going to give this a name of Highway 72, and we'll call it back since this is the, the back terrain model. And it's going to left click through the options, a data point to accept, and it's going to go ahead and build those triangles for us. Okay. Let me change my display or turn off my references here so you can see the uh, proposed triangles that it created. Okay, so there's my triangles there. I want to see the contours. Just select the terrain model, change your feature definition to maybe proposed contours, you get something like that. Okay. You can change the display style. When I had this open initially, I think I have this set for transparent. So if you want to see a slightly different look, set it for wireframe. And now you can view your contours like so. Okay. Now, so that, that would be for creating one piece of your project. Now, what if we wanted to create both pieces of the project? Okay, we, we have a corridor here, and we have a corridor on the other side of the bridge. Well, we can do that. Okay, that's certainly a, a viable option, right? So I have another file over here called Highway 72 TM Mainline All, and this one has both corridor pieces referenced in, as well as the intersection and the crossover. Now, we can utilize that same tool again. Now, in this case, I have my, my components turned off. What you're seeing here is just strictly the, the 3D brake lines from, from the corridors. Um, so we can, again, we could create a train from this as well. Now, keep in mind, we do have a gap in between here, so we will probably end up with a, uh, a big triangle or two between the two, uh, the two, um, the two elements there. So I'm going to go back to terrain, and we'll go back to the graphical filter once again. Again, it's the same process. I'm just going to grab the proposed finished grade. Do a preview on that. It's going to highlight my graphics in my file. Call this one Highway 72 Mainline. We'll call that one All. And we'll left click through the prompts. It's going to go ahead and create the train there. Okay, now you're going to see right away, you know, where the bridge area is there. We've got a little, it's a big triangle going on there. Okay, so, yeah, it's Maybe good or bad, depends on what, what you're trying to get out of this, okay? But the key to this is that, you know, we have one complete terrain model for your project. Now, this could be used for, you know, your drainage engineers could take this now, you know, and use it for their drainage purposes. 
they can analyze their contours for drainage purposes. And in addition to that, if the contractor wants this information or someone else wants to use this information in another piece of software, then we can export this out to a different format. Okay, so we can export this out to many different formats. So if you just select the terrain model, you just select it, just hover your mouse over there until you get to the uh, context menu here. We have some export options. Okay, we can send this straight out to uh, Land XML. Um, it's pretty common if you're working with a contractor that he may want the uh, Land XML information. Okay, now he may want just the triangles as a separate file, and he may also want the uh, the break lines as a separate file. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to export the terrain model out as first as just the triangles only, and I'll export it out as the features only to uh, Land XML, and then he can bring that into his software that he uses. Okay, so the first option here, I'm just going to give it a name. It's going to call it triangles or surface, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to say export triangles only. And I'm just going to go through the prompts here. Highway 72, export triangles only. And then I'm going to give it a name, Highway 72 triangles. I'm going to put that in the construction folder because this is for construction. So I have a construction folder set up here. So this is going to be the files that I'm going to use to send out to uh, to my contractor if he needs them. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click save on that. I'm just going to overwrite that because I did this earlier to make sure it all worked. Okay. So now my triangles are written out to that XML file. So now I'm going to come back here again. Okay. Because this is how he requested the data for me. Now I could put both in this file if I wanted to. Too. You can see there's an option to do both. Okay. I'm going to do it separately, so I'm going to say export features only. He may want the features only for whatever reason. Okay, so I'm going to call this one features. And send features out to Land XML over here. And maybe I'll call that one break lines because maybe that's what he's used to using in his software. Maybe they're called break lines, okay? So now we have those two Land XML files created. Now he can go do what he needs to do with those, okay? So... That's how you can do that, okay? Now, I want to play a quick video here because we have a new tool that's coming in uh, the next release that's going to help uh, optimize this process somewhat where you don't have to use the graphical filters where we can just read the, uh, read the data directly from the, the feature definitions from the corridors and whatnot. So I'm going to push a quick video here that uh, Joe Wax Munsky, our, our product manager, made for us. I think it's about a minute or so. Just want to play this. I'm going to push this out to you guys. All right, let's look at the new tool I'm coming out in R3, the 10.8 release. And so you can see that we have the model referenced in. We have the intersection and the crossover. And the tool can be found under Create Train Models from Design Meshes. Remember, this is 10.8. So you can see the tool will actually take any of your design meshes with the volume option of design. It, uh, it knows about the mesh in the file, so that's what it's um, using to determine what f meshes should be used to create this design surface. In this case, I could go from top or bottom if I wanted another rough grade. I could um, use that. In this case, I'm taking the top. Whatever I see on the top, I want to make a tray model out of. I'm going to give it a feature definition, and it's um, going to take and make two terrains here. So let's just do proposed contours. And um, we can see we can make an exterior boundary, which is nice to um, reduce the triangulization. So we don't have to deal with that. And it's also going to make interior boundaries. And the, the nice part is it will make two exterior boundaries and voids if net needed. And if there's a minimum area, I could also say, hey, anything less than 100 feet or 200 feet, I don't want to have an interior void. Um, so I'll just please uh, um, not even do it and not even put it in the train. So right now I'm going to accept the, um, the settings I have with the upfront heads up prompt and data point to accept. And it's interrogating that 3D model and you can see it built contours. If we look at it here, you can see that it um, proposed contours and built DC and DC1. And you can see that it took in the intersection very nice in the crossover. Let's zoom in here. You can see that it contoured that quite well by just looking at the three-dimensional um, design and build um, the train model from that automatically. Um, when you need to create 
these uh, the terrain models of your project. So that's coming in the next release. So look for that um, sometime soon. So the next uh, topic I want to cover is just 3D brake lines in general. This sometimes is required, again, for the contractor. He may just want a 3D brake line file. Okay, so I want to show you how you can create that without having to all deal with all the references and all that kind of stuff. Um, he's generally probably not going to want all that. He probably just wants a DGN or a, a DWG or a D, DXF even of just the 3D features. Okay, so I'm going to go into another file here that I have set up. I'm going to go back to my terrain folder here. This one's called Highway 72 3D Model Features. Again, similar process to set up this file. It's just a 3D design file with my corridors referenced in. I just turned off my components and I only have the, uh, the features that are displaying on the top finished surface. Okay. Now, since we're talking about brake lines, um, you know, sometimes it's necessary to add some additional line work to your terrains um, when you're creating terrains, okay? Now, in this case, in this file, I actually did that. You know, since you're passing this off to the contractor, then you're ultimately responsible for some of this data. Um, it's usually a good idea to give him the most accurate representation as possible, okay? Now, sometimes with the corridors, we don't always get, you know, we don't model transversely or linearly sometimes, okay, or in certain aspects. So we may need to add some additional geometry to our terrain or to our file that may not even be needed for our plans, but maybe the contractor needs it. Okay. So like in this case, I just drew some, some extra line work in here. Okay. Cause maybe he needs that for his software. Okay. But I just wanted to point that out that, you know, sometimes you may need to add a few little extra pieces here and there to, to totally give them a 100% finished and accurate um, 3d break line file. Okay. So, Again, got my files referenced in here. I've been working in 3D one more time. And what I want to do here is I want to generate just a 3D break line file. Okay, this file right now just has a bunch of references attached to it. Okay, and I probably don't want to merge that stuff in. Um, I probably could just select these and say merge them into 3D, but I don't want to do that. Okay, um, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to save this out. I'm going to do a save as on it. This will give me the ability to save it into some different formats. Okay, so my deliverable is not just DGN, but DWG or DXF. Um, I can do, I can export this data out this way. Okay, so I'm just going to export this 3D information to DGN. But as I do that, I want to strip out all the references and everything else. Basically, just going to merge it in essentially. Okay, so if you want to do this with DWG or DXF, this would be the process. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to options. I'm going to go to uh, my references here, and I want to look at my levels in view number two, and I want to merge in all my references here. I want to make sure I merge in only the stuff that's displayed currently in my file. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my filter here, make sure we look at everything. I'm going to toggle off my frozen levels. I don't want to bring those over. I want to bring what I, what I see there. I'm going to go to my Models tab, and I'm going to say, okay, go into the 3D model and just give us a 3D model of just those 3D break lines, and that's all I want, okay? So, again, this could be DGN, DWG, DXF, whatever you need to uh, to give to someone. Okay, so I'm just going to click OK, and then I need to come over here and put this somewhere. So let me go to uh, my Construction folder. Let's call it, like, 3D Breaks. That's my completed file. If you see any files in the folder that say complete, those are the ones that I've already completed ahead of time. Those should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. If I did everything correctly, that should generate that file for us, which just is dumb. 3D break lines. References should be all stripped out. And uh, just have break lines that we can give to someone if that's what they need. Okay. Sounds silly that someone would want this, but I have seen this on a few projects. So just wanted to show how we could do that fairly easily. So a couple more items to cover here. Hopefully we could finish up early. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the uh, export to, uh, to IFC. IFC is kind of this industry foundation class file. 
It's uh, developed by the uh, the Building Smart people. It's typically used uh, in the building information modeling um, these days um, to uh, to hold data and models. Okay, it's basically just a text file format for models. Okay, so we can do that. Um, so you'll notice here on the home tab, we can import IRD and we can export IFC. Okay, so I'm going to focus on exporting it to uh, you. Scott. Are you there? Yeah. Yes. I'm here. Yep. Hello. I'm here. Is it just me or have we lost audio for Scott? I'm here. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. Scott, we have some folks uh, losing audio. I still hear you. I think you're good. I think it might be just isolated as Joey, so I would just keep going. Hey, Scott, we cannot hear you now. I don't know if you muted. I can confirm that also, Chuck. Thanks for your patience. We're just going to figure this audio out real quick for everyone. Have our presenter log out and log back in, so it'll be just a moment. Hello, Scott. I thought I heard you. Did you hear me? Let me try the laptop here. I don't know what's going. On. I can hear you now, Scott. And I think we lost him. Uh, is that you, Scott? No, I think it's it's me. Is it you? It is you. <laughs> All right, we still have, we're still working on getting Scott back here. What'd you What'd you do, Scott? We hear you. All right. Well, Scott gets his um, or logs back in, and we try and address this issue. A um, couple things in the meantime. What do you want me to do, Joey? Are you back, Scott? I'm back. Can okay. You... All right. <laughs> Carry on, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I never, I never left. I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, we you couldn't hear, me? hear you. At, no, we couldn't hear you at all. Yeah. Let's... Just start the share again, and I think we're. Yeah, yeah we'll keep we... going. That is bizarre. Sorry about this, everyone. That's all right. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the IFC file. So I mentioned we're going to export to IFC. I'm going to do that by going to my corridor. So I'm going to go over to my corridors folder here, open up my finished corridor. 
We're going to export that to the IFC file format. Okay, so let's open that up. This is the same corridor I created back in uh, session uh, three, but I believe is when we created the corridor. Okay, so there's our corridor file there. If we want to export this out to IFC to bring into some other piece of software, such as BIMVision, which I'll show, we can do that here. Okay, so we'll go up to export to IFC, select that option. And we can do this by name boundary. So you could break up your corridor if you need to. So you could place some name boundaries in here if you needed to divide up the project and send it out in different chunks. Um, you can do that by creating name boundaries. I don't have any name boundaries created for this particular example. So I'm just going to select the whole corridor and send it out to uh, to IFC. Okay. So it's getting all the meshes. I'm going to give it a name. I've already done this earlier today. So I'm just going to overwrite my file I have. And then basically what it did there is it read the information from the 3D model, sent it out to the IFC file. And then now if you want to take a look at that, um, I'm going to go over to my desktop here. And I'm going to take a look at um, it's a little program I have to view the, uh, the IFC file called BIMVision. Okay, it's a free downloadable. So I'm going to open this up and we'll be able to see what the, the IFC file looks like inside of BIMVision. Okay, and this is just the IFC viewer. I'm going to come over here and say open. I'm going to grab my IFC file I just exported out. Open that up. And you'll see we have a pretty accurate representation of our model in another piece of software. Okay. So you can see here it's our intersection that Joey did a few weeks back and the crossover. See all the bridge creating that I did previously. And the whole model comes in pretty clean for the most part. Um, doesn't have a lot of nice pretty colors to it, but um, at least we can get it in here if you need to uh, to do this type of thing. Okay, so that's the BIM vision um, for viewing IFC files. Okay, it's a free download, so go out there and Google that. You can get that and uh, view your IFC files if, if you have need for that. Okay, so hopefully everybody can still hear me. Let's wrap this up. Um, last thing I wanted to cover, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about cross-section reports. A lot of times uh, people still require some type of cross-section staking report or some type of cross-section gradebook. So we're going to wrap this up uh, with a holiday uh, video from uh, Mr. Joe wax Munsky, our product manager, who's going to show us a little demo of the uh, cross-section grade tool that's coming in the next release. It will show you how to uh, get this uh, cross-section type of information for slopes and offsets and all that useful stuff that you may need for, uh, for a cross-section type report from your model. Okay, so I'm going to play a little video clip here. I'm going to push this out to you guys. I'm going to stop sharing, and then we'll come back and uh, answer Q&A in a little bit. So, so there's a short little video clip I want to show how to uh, do cross-section report from the model. Okay, another new tool in 10.8. I want to create a grade book from um, where my cross-section name boundaries are based off, upon the three-dimensional model. So obviously I need to have some name boundaries. I'm just going to pick the geometry here. And I'm going to give it a start point here and end at the end. Accept. And we can see them draw in 3D space. And basically, we're creating the um, where the uh, snapshots for those uh, um, sections would actually be located at. So now I'm going to go to the new tool, Civil Analysis Cross-Section Report. It's going to ask me for a name boundary group. In this case, I have Highway 72. We'll just give it a data point. And you can see the across uh, section grade report. Um, you have uh, a couple formats as you had in the past. So there you have it. That's a, a new tool that's going to be available, a new report type for uh, cross section reporting purposes. 
in the uh, in the next release. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.